Caroline Jouan for France in their traditional blue. New Zealand in the black. Joanne sends us underway in the final, and it's Reese Poldy laying the New Zealand captain who soars early to bring it down. Miller, New Zealand get the first chance to attack, but this is a tough, hard, physical French team to get through. Cuck has done well, though, to create a little space here on the right for Woodman Wycliffe to try and barge her way through. Noel's defence. Kaka again, Silfani will rush up on her, and Kaka's able to get rid of it and deliver for Blyde, who's been an outstanding try scoring form this weekend. It's a shaky pass. She'll go back and clean it up herself. Tyler King playing in front of their own goalpost. Poldy Lane, and now some room for Woodman Wycliffe. Portia Woodman Wycliffe has still got the piece speed she needs. Chases are coming. Woodman Wycliffe going to have to put the foot down a little bit more. And the veteran, the all-time leading try scorer, opens it up for New Zealand. Woodman Wycliffe, no strangers to finals, no strangers to the try zone. Pori Lane, what a ball over the top. And then Portia just lets off the gas, thinking she's going to coast, but Lunoel gives her chase, but it's not good enough. Woodman Wycliffe says, all right, let's gas it up another notch, and she coasts down the pitch. The opening strike from New Zealand's strike weapon is Tyler King. Oh, curls a lovely conversion, and it's New Zealand who go up seven points to nil early on in the final. What a start for New Zealand. They have been in that drought for a cup final, and they are here and ready to play for it. Carla Neeson underneath this one. Brings it in the French captain. She just never shirks any bit of her duties. Carla Neeson, they're such an experienced French team with some exciting talent in there too. And speaking of exciting, here's one of them, and Cecile Silfani gets her team on the front foot. And away goes Seraphine Okemba. She's been such a danger, a real threat. Noel with Blyde, and Noel almost around Michaela Blyde. Not quite, it's there for Juan. Back they come. France in the middle, working through it. Yin Jason, and then Siofani on the wraparound, created the space for the French flyer up the middle, and Cecile Siofani. Siofani with the answer for France. It's one try apiece. Jason with the show and go takes it in, pulls two Black Ferns players in. Georgia Miller almost wraps it up, but it is an incredible wrap from Siofani, and she has the pace, has a look back, no one in sight, and France right back in it. All squared up as Joanne converts. 22 tries for the season, and Cecile Silfani, her best ever, and she's closing in on Joanna Grise's all-time season record for France. What a final we've got as Pauli Lane brings it in for New Zealand. Georgia Miller looking to bust her way through the French defence. Kaka. And now Tyler King. Poldy Lane goes herself. Josh dragged down. Good tackle, Okemba. Woodman Wycliffe there. France's defence having it cover across. It squirted through the hands. Danger here. Or oh, did well. Got lucky, Tanika Willison. If that had bounced to Siofani, big trouble. Some ropey old passing here from New Zealand. They got a little bit of frenetic energy about them at the moment. Here goes Michaela Blyde. Speaking of frenetic energy, the hit, the spin, the swerve, the speed. Michaela Blyde, solo supreme. Just when you think absolutely nothing is on, that woman steps up, ball is in two hands, gives a wave to those back home watching. 
and just disjointed blue jerseys and nothing but space up ahead when this woman decides to put foot to pedal. Look of intensity on the face of Michaela Blyde. It's a small celebration as they go back in front here in New Zealand with the conversion as well. So 14 points to seven. Tit for tat at the moment. We saw the emotion on this woman's face during the national anthem, but from the moment the whistle blows, she is all business. Kickoff goes and is knocked down by Siofani. It's going to knock into touch. Might have been able to get two good hands and catch that one. Siofani here pops a little hand up, perhaps. Takes ownership for that one. Could have caught it cleanly, but saw that lurking figure of Blyde darting towards her. She is World Rugby Sevens Player of the Year, and she's closing in on the great Jocelyn Landry for all-time points. Eight more to tie up. Oh, good hands from King. And now look at it. Just see the eyes up, that lighting up. Blyde and Silfani come together again. And oh, Glassino almost blowing through for France. Miller, oh, that's a big hole and a good step. And she's through it. The easy gate of Georgia Miller taking the game by the scruff of the net. This supreme young talent. Another try for New Zealand. Another try for this woman. Another wave to the crowd, but the left foot step. Gets Okemba, does my knee in from up here. But that swerve, the stride, the deception. And she pulls New Zealand ahead in this final. Two quick strikes from New Zealand before half time, and it's 21 points to seven in the final. Time for a restart, though. France to receive this one. Still aiming towards Siafani with Blyde, but you also have Portia Woodman Wycliffe lurking at the bottom of your screen, and we know Tyler King is capable of kicking both ways. It is over to Blyde's side. She goes where she'll fly up and again Siofani can't bring it down. So more possession here for New Zealand. Kaka did well to stay in support there and now open it up. King standard on the toe for Woodman Wycliffe. The bounce might sit up for Portia. The hands are superb and Portia Woodman Wycliffe gets a second in the final. What a piece of skill and class. It's the left hand snag and the right hand put down from Portia Woodman Wycliffe. She's already been in the try zone today. <laughs> I love that sign. You see Portia pointing straight ahead. There's no one in the backfield. Bounce of the ball is good. The grab is better. The shift, the shimmy, the put down. He's had a great weekend regardless, and he's loving that. He's getting the kisses back. Wow, New Zealand have withstood the pressure, and Tyler King just knocks another one over. Wow, what a half it was. 28 points to seven. New Zealand leading France. King gets us back into underway. It was seven all, and it feels like in a blanket of an eye. And that being one of the reasons France unable to claim the restarts, it gives New Zealand more ball. Okay, knock on. Definitely dampening French spirits. That inability to hold on to those restarts. This time it's Okemba. In the first half it was Siafani. And just giving the ball back to New Zealand. They're so strong on attack. They have threats across the pitch. I mean, Kaka, Woodman, Whitcliffe, six tries this weekend, blind in double digits. You do not want to give them any more opportunities. New Zealand chance to attack first in the second half, but it was messy, and there was a knock-on. So a reprieve for France. They need to make the most of it. It's a little breath here for this French side. 
They need to stay composed, but they need to get down the pitch. Get that ball in Joanne's hands. You have threats down here. Grise in. Give her a crack on the edge. Grassi know as France look to unleash some of the firepower. Here's one of them, Silfani. She's going to go herself up the middle, did it once in the first half, gets through one tackle, and now just going to back herself. Blyde chasing, Blyde coming at her, grabbing her around the waist and getting all over that ball. Great clear out, though, from Grassi no, just in the nick of time. Thought Blyde had a good shot on that. Gee, she's in everything at the moment, Michaela Blyde, and then they concede a penalty in New Zealand. France need to move, and there they go with the tap, and finally playing quickly. That's Grise, or oh, finding Lutos, and somehow it's going to work out for them. There was a bit of a clash of bodies. New Zealand looking in disbelief, but Valentin Lutos played on, and France peg one back. The handoff from Grise, the try from Lutos, and France open up the second half. A little dot down, French flags flying, <laughs> wigs coming <laughs> off. It's hair raising Time in up. the final in Vancouver. Tyler King's just getting some treatment. She was involved in that clash of bodies as Lutour slipped through and took full advantage. France need another one quickly, 28-14. Looks like Tyler King's coming off the pitch. See if France try and regain this restart. Time on. Joanne puts it a perfect weighted kick, but again, Poldy Lane and Woodman Wycliffe, that pod has worked really well for New Zealand so far. All space again for Miller. Just stopping it this time. No getting away from Grassino. Switching the ball into that left hand, running on that angled run she loves so much. Lays it back for Kaka and Willison. Felix Hotham out there. Pody Lane, Woodman Wycliffe, she's already got two, and now she's full of running round the outside. Who says those legs haven't got any speed in them anymore? Chalk up a hat-trick for Portia Woodman Wycliffe. A hat-trick hat in the final for Woodman Wycliffe, but it all started from the youngster, Georgia Miller, the confidence that woman plays with. And then it's simple through the hands, but Portia Woodman Wycliffe, she did that. There was nothing on. It's a bit of footwork. And then that powerful running we've seen from her for several years. We'll take it as a hat clip <laughs> when she's doing them. I think a hat clip. I'll uh, trademark that one. <laughs> well, New Zealand again, just at France, was coming back at them. 35-14, and there it is, 2.43. On. 35-14 as Pell brings it down under the attention of Blyde and again New Zealand they're just really relentless at the moment going to be held up here though in the middle of it all as they're going to just Drag towards the sideline. Manaya Nuku in the thick of it all. France know they need to up the intensity. They need to play quickly. Grise trying to go around the outside of Miller. Miller looking to try and roll out of there. Just almost caught. Silfani. Two and a half minutes. They need this woman to get rolling. Tried to offload in contact as it's been knocked down, and Manaya Nuku is just going to walk straight away. Is it Nuku or Kaka? Which one of them? They both look like they were heading there. I think it's Manaya Nuku on her way to the Sinbin. Cynical foul there. Batting the ball down intentionally, deems the referee. So New Zealand down to six, but France time is not in their favor. Two and a half minutes to play. 35-14. It's a big margin, a big scoreline for a final. But New Zealand now playing with six, and Valentin Lutos, who got them back into it, then losing the ball in contact. New Zealand knocking it on the floor, but it's all leading up time. Exactly. It's not a bad result. Ball maintains 
on the French side, but setting up the scrum. You might see some experienced players start to lollygag over there from the Black Ferns as substitutions are being made. Yeah, inching ever closer, but that first title still appears like it might be elusive. It's not done yet, but time is ticking. We've seen on. that gap grow between Crouch. New Zealand and Australia and the rest of the teams, Fine. but just when we think it's closing, New Zealand put on Set. a performance like this. Kami Grassino to feed the scrum. Flying onto this one. Jadu Latuli, she's made a welcome return. Experienced number 13 there, using her physical presence. It's come out Never awkwardly. It's time. another penalty against Seven, New Zealand. Seven. Their discipline starting to fall away late in this match. 90 seconds. New Zealand still playing with six. Lily Dezu gets rid of Poldy Lane and then finds Grassino dragged down by Miller. Dezu can't find a way through. New Zealand scrambling well. Felix Hotham, has she won it back for New Zealand? Yes, she has. Brilliant turnover. Brilliant game management here from the Black Ferns. Just slowing I'm things off. down. Sub until the substitutions come in, of course, and time goes off. Have a look at that body position. Grassy No has so much strength, but she is unable to even shift. <laughs> Felix Hotham. Well, New Zealand have set such a standard over the years that they've got themselves in a real jam to start this season. Talked about having a stone in the shoe over the Christmas period after the first two tournaments. And then it grew to be more like a rock after Perth where they were finishing fifth. But certainly the most complete look this weekend to New Zealand as they try and finish this off here. Still running deep inside their own territory as they play with six. Oh, heavy contact. Seal Fani stayed down, ball spills clear. Then it's over. Ula Tuli has France look for a consolation try, but New Zealand still keeping them at bay. Somehow Ula Tuli got that away to Grassino, and somehow Seal Fani's upstanding and able to deliver that ball. New Zealand stretch now, it's there for Chloe Pell. Poldy Lane comes at her, but Chloe Pell will get the score for France in the finish. The finish for Chloe Pell, but the hooter sounds. And France will fall short of their first ever title, but it's well worked through the hands. They make the numerical advantage count. Pell awarded Back. with the try. Move out of the way. The final act has no bearing on the outcome because it's been New Zealand who finally get their first win of the season. Their 34th title overall. And they go back to back in Vancouver. The champions in Canada. It is New Zealand, the title winners. New Zealand, what a performance. They always play so well here in Canada. And that was just comprehensive from start to finish.